with a view from sitting on the fence. This is Old Mate's non-tech channel. Hey, how are we? Sitting on the fence here at Old Mate's non-tech channel. Been a while since I put a video up here, isn't it? More than two months. It's mainly because I haven't thought of anything to really rant about up until, well, this past weekend and yesterday. Especially yesterday, Arvo. But uh, I think it's about time I pass on my opinion, which I'm not allowed to do over on the other channel. Because I get into trouble because it's not tech-related. It's unbelievable, these people who like to tell channels what to do. Anyway, or demand it anyway. Um, I don't even know where the fuck to start, to be honest with you. <laughs> now, for those of you who are new to Old Mate's non-tech channel, this is the offshoot of my main channel. And the video production quality and the audio quality is garbage compared to the main channel. They're, this is just dead raw. Okay, there's no no funky stuff goes on here. Some people would say the production quality over on the main channel's no better. That's possibly true. Let's start with um. Well, the rust bucket state these days here in Victoria, and a government that doesn't even care that we hold the world record for the longest longest lockdown. Anyway, they don't seem to care. Mind you, journalists aren't gutsy enough to even ask Andrews because he'll, you know, as usual, turn arrogant and nasty and say, well, no, 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 no. Let's be very clear. You know, you're right. Victorians know the drill. The roadmap out of this lockdown is nothing short of it's catastrophic, right? Another five or six weeks of lockdown. Still no social reintegration. The government's banking on the public going, right, well, let's get together. There is massive division in the state. They don't have a plan for that. Um, they've got no idea how regional Victoria and Metro Melbourne are supposed to come together again. I can tell you now, Regional Victoria is going to be very antsy about Melburnians coming into Regional Victoria, even us down here. Um, very, very antsy about it. Um, lockdowns were supposed to be lessened. Well, they haven't been. They're still going. We're back in the lockdown. Um... There's no way of encouraging the public to come together. The government's just hoping that opening retail and hospitality, the public will just forget about the last couple of years. You're joking. No, and Andrews doesn't defend anything. This is the other shit thing about it. He's not defending anything. He won't defend Victoria internationally. Our international reputation is shot irrespective of the federal government. Completely irrespective. I don't care what anyone says. Victoria is worse off than the rest of the country. Right? We're seeing other states open up and have fun. We're treated like a fucking bunch of criminals here, locked in our houses. It's like being locked in supermax. Government doesn't care. Andrews is hoping by this time next year, we forget about the last two years. I don't think so. Last night, and he, he didn't say it publicly, he will today though, the construction union got shut down. Now, I know for a fact down here, there's a ban on people leaving Melbourne going to regional Victoria and a ban on regional Victoria going into Melbourne. There are two building sites here in Geelong where 95% of the workers are from Melbourne from hotspots. One side in particular, it's all union, 
There's no QR codes, there's no nothing, and they congregate with as though there was nothing going on. I know where it is, and I know the trouble it's causing. Yesterday there, look, the union in Victoria has been lucky compared to the rest of the state. They haven't been shut down. Hospo's down, retail's down, Ma Pa small businesses are down. Um, tourism, shot, all this stuff. It's it The, the state's fucked. Now, the construction industry, I, look, no one likes to see anyone get out of work, but when they're not following the bloody rules, they don't have a choice. Yesterday's protests, and my Melbourne viewers, you'll, you'll probably be already aware of this. If you've seen it, there were some union people, the rest of it, rent a crowd, and the right-wing extremists. Now, I've had my first vaccine, and yes, my 5G is fantastic. I, I, I'm having great 5G, and by the time I get my second dose, I should have, I think it's about 100 bars of 5G. It's phenomenally good. I can upload through my brain. <laughs> Look, I'm pro-choice, but I mean, here in Victoria, I don't want to be hamstrung by the new rules that are put in place. You know, Andrew's has done all this shit. Um, we're no longer a country. A bunch of states rejecting everybody. I suppose the upside is at least Daniel Andrews and Berejiklian are still calling, you know, Victorian and New South Wales and Australian. Whereas Queensland, well, we're no longer Australian, we're Queenslanders. Territorians, South Australians and Western Australians. They don't seem to be, want to be part of the country anymore. Well, I don't know how that's going to go down. Because I can tell you now, WA, it's only going to take one case in WA from another state. And McGann will just put in a hard border again. He thinks he's going to keep the virus out of WA. His international border will never open. Um... But the roadmap for Victoria is nothing short of disastrous. Now, some of my viewers are Melbournians. I know one of my viewers, small business operator. I don't know whether they're in the construction business. I know they are in the home maintenance business. Doubtful they can work. What we saw yesterday, or what we've seen over the past week here in, in Victoria has been nothing short of disgusting. I get the frustration. But the other issue I've got, and I'm no way, shape or form taking a pot shot at the medical fraternity. They're worried about the health. The only problem is they don't take into account that if we were to do what they wanted to do, they need an economy. If we were to do what they want the government to do, okay, lock, stock and barrel, there will be no economy. And then they're going to be saying, why is my favourite coffee shop shut? Why are my retail stores shut? They can't answer that. The Burnett Institute has got two different frameworks for two of the most powerful states in the country. I think they've been, they've done it for New South Wales independently. I think they've been told what to do for Victoria. Same with the Doherty Institute, neither of which I have a lot of time for, regardless of their reputation. Because the, 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 they don't understand, right? The head of the nurses and midwifery union wants the lockdown in place until the end of November. Okay, if we do that, you, do, you then have to tell the government how to recover the, the state because the economy is going to be stuffed. You're going to have a bunch of healthy people. No jobs. Then what do you do? As usual, walk away and say, well, it's not up to me. I got what I want. Now you fix the problem. Standard. Standard. 
mid-November before anything happens in this state. We've got another five weeks of bloody lockdowns. We're going to have the world record of the longest lockdown place in the world. Andrews doesn't care. This is the same Premier who does not defend a Victoria against attacks from other states in Australia, doesn't defend us against attacks from WA or Queensland or the Territory, defends us against South Australia, doesn't defend us against attacks from Tasmania. This is the same Premier who's about to get shat on from a great height by the Union. And funnily enough, I noticed this. Now, interstate viewers want to have seen this. Victorian viewers would. Matthew Guy takes over the leadership of the opposition and starts projecting a positive outlook for the state. Now Daniel Andrews is doing the same thing. He's trying to be positive. He Look, there's no way... I, I know this for a fact down here, and I know where the old lady lives. I don't want anyone from Melbourne. The division in this state is massive, and there's no repair plan for it. Daniel Andrews is just hoping that when the restrictions come off, Victoria goes, all right, well, let's move. I can tell you now, there's two areas of Victoria that want nothing to do with Melbourne. Three areas I'm aware of. That want nothing to do with Melbourne. One area is desperate for it, and I understand that, mainly because they're a five, six, nearly seven hour drive from Melbourne. The far northwest of the state wants nothing to do with them. Central Victoria is very concerned. Down here, parts of down here, uh, I don't think will accept anyone from Melbourne. My old holiday town is one of them. Um, it's, you know, the damage is massive and the government's just Oh, well, once we open everything up, every, Victoria will just come back together. I can t No, they won't. The animosity between regional Victoria and Melbourne is massive. And these fucking unions, there's a site in Melbourne that's riddled with this virus, and they've taken it from the site and brought it into the regions. The CFMEU won't admit it. One major union site has got well in excess of 100 plus cases. The Rats locked down, Ware locked down, Seymour's locked down, Mitchell Shire's locked down, Surf Coast is locked down, because of the because these people are just not adhering. Because they think, well, it doesn't apply to me. I'm a union person. I'll do what I bloody well want. Now, I'm not against the unions, but these people who just say, well, I'm part of the militant arm of the CFWMEU, it was called the CFWMEU. Now they're just calling it. It's gone back to its CFMEU. All right. The protests yesterday were ugly, but there were a number of militant union members there. The rest of it's probably a hangover from the weekend's protests. I get the frustration. Oh, look, I'm frustrated. <coughs> I'm sick of being stuck here. I'm sick of not being able to go anywhere. Now, there was a report out of the States somewhere. One of my US viewers might be able to confirm this. That one of the states in the US, I don't know where, has seen a rise in clinically diagnosed agoraphobia from being stuck at home for so long. Now, I don't know whether the same is for my UK viewers or any of my European viewers, but I can tell you now, I'm wary of going out. And the, the other issue is Andrews has got no plan to get people out of their homes. He's just going to make this assumption. We're all just going to, the minute the restrictions are uh, re, um, removed, we're going to move. Somehow I don't think that's going to play out the way he thinks it is. In fact, I can probably guarantee you it's not. But fed income. You know, the rest of the country attacks Victoria and Andrews doesn't defend us. And frankly, neither does Sutton. And the Deputy Secretary of the Health Department talks in, you know, terminology that the average Joe can't understand, you know, the jargon. 
You've got the ex-CEO of Public Transport Victoria as the COVID commander. I mean, a career bureaucrat. And yet, somehow, all these fucknuts who thinks Andrews has done the gold standard job of managing this. Yes, Victoria's standard debt. I can tell you now, he keeps saying we're going to do this national plan. This state will still be in lockdowns for a long time to come because that's the only way, because we don't have the resources in this state to handle it. It's just shut the state, shut the state, shut the state, shut the state. 70% lockdowns were less likely. No, they're not. We're still doing lockdowns. They're not less likely. It's just, that's it. Five cases, bang, down you go. The whole council area, the LGA. You got five cases, you're down. And it's never seven days. They said that about Shepparton. It lasted 28 days. You know, every Victorian knows seven days is bullshit. It's, you know, this lockdown's now gone. You know, kids have missed out on school. Government doesn't care. Kids are behind. Victoria's education system is stuffed. It's worse now. Crossed. And yet, who cares? Government doesn't. Mental health. Victoria's mental health is a disaster. Now, Labor's standard policy is throw money at a problem and it'll go away. Here's a trick. It won't. Because what you refuse to admit is there's a phantom pandemic. And I'm in it. And I know a lot of people who are. Government won't admit it. It's just throw money at a problem. That's what Andrews has always done since he... Throw money at the issue and then I don't have to worry about it. He's making an assumption, and you can see it. You can hear it. He's assuming that when the restrictions come off, right, well, Victoria will be all back together again. I can tell you now, right, my interstate viewers, my international viewers, this is how Victoria handles the out an outbreak. He's aiming at 80 plus percent, okay? Now, my 5G is phenomenal at the moment. I'm going to have 10G by the time next Monday rolls around. You know, I'm going to be super intelligent and and I'll be able to hear everyone, everything says because I've got, you know, give me a break. But anyway, I needed it for the other half. All right. If, if I didn't have to do it, I wouldn't have done it. But then again, with the way Victoria is, if I hadn't done it, I would be stuck at home for the rest of my life. Um, But anyway... Andrews's thing is you just throw money at a problem. Labor just throws money at issues and hopes that that'll solve a problem. It doesn't. Andrews is assuming that once the restrictions come off, Victoria will be like, hey, let's move. I can tell you now. That doesn't fix social isolation, doesn't fix social dislocation, and doesn't fix public confidence. You see, it'll only take one case in an LGA over the 80% mark, and that's it. He will shut the state. Because he lies. He always has. He, ever since this whole thing, we're going down for seven days, turns into 14, turns into 21, turns into 28, turns into two months, three months. He lies through his teeth. He holds false hope, false hope, and then just works. This roadmap is not an economic roadmap. It's not a social roadmap. It's a roadmap written by a bunch of medicos whose economic understanding is zilch and there's no confidence. There is nothing in the roadmap to build confidence because the Burnett Institute and the Doherty Institute wouldn't know social confidence if it fell over them. They're not looking. They're looking at the virus. They're not looking at the social damage, the massive catastrophic economic damage, the possibility of Victoria going into a dire recession and dragging the rest of the country with us. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not our problem. Well, it is. There's nothing in the roadmap for social reintegration. There's nothing in the roadmap to give the public confidence to leave home. They're just assuming that once the restrictions come off, the public will just go bang. Yeah, they will. New South Wales, up to Queensland, to the Territory, to South Australia. That's where they'll go. They'll just leave the state. If you put in a roadmap like this and you don't 
offer public confidence and you're working on an assumption that removing restrictions builds public confidence? No, it doesn't. What builds public confidence is the truth that you will not lock down. Now, Andrews has flat out lied through his teeth, all right, because he take he takes, he mimics his governing style on that of China. You've only got to look at the way he talks to the public. You've only got to look at the way he treats the public. The roadmap is 80%, no more lockdowns. Bullshit. Two cases in an LGA, the whole state will shut down because Victoria's hospital system is, is, is only marginally better than that of WA. So I don't buy that bullshit. Secondly, all right, how do you get public confidence? We've got huge social isolation and dislocation. The Burnett Institute says nothing about that. It's all just about removing restrictions and vaccination and removing restrictions and vaccination. Where's the social reintegration? Like, how do you get the public to trust that you can go to a restaurant? Vaccine passports are not trust. That's not confidence. That's just proof. How do you convince people who are scared to leave their homes now that, yes, you can now go to X, Y, and Z? The Burnett Institute doesn't do that, neither did the Doherty Institute. They're just making these assumptions, and they are assumptions, admittedly, that removing restrictions, the public will just be like, yay, well, I can tell you now, there's going to be a lot of people going, oh, fuck, I don't want to leave home. I'll get COVID. Like, I used to like, well, before this, I didn't mind going to the shopping centre. Didn't mind having a sticky beak around. Now it's go down the shopping centre, get what I need, come home. That's what a lot of Victorians are doing. It's rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. There's nothing from the Burnett Institute that says we need to help the public come together again. It's get vaxxed, remove restrictions, allow certain things to open up a little bit. That's not, that's not building confidence. That's not repairing social isolation. That's not repairing massive economic devastation. They've just taken the medical side of it. They haven't taken any other side. All right, they don't understand economics. They don't understand small business, obviously. No medico does. But where's the whole... All right, Victoria, we know that you've now reached 80-something percent. You know, go and see your family. Well, you can't. Because if your family lives in Melbourne, you're not going to want to go into Melbourne. Especially if there's, you know, 5,000 cases. If you live in Melbourne, you're not going to want to go to, into regional Victoria if there's 30 cases. Where's the public confidence? Where's the, where's the whole thing of, you know, I've read some of the Burnett report and it doesn't show social reintegration. It doesn't show anything about helping small business get back together. HOSPO is slaughtered in this state. We've lost our coffee culture. Andrews doesn't care. We've lost our nighttime. Andrews doesn't care. He doesn't care about any of that. He has said nothing about bringing Victoria back to a happy state. Because the prick doesn't smile. At the end of last year, he goes, oh, this is a great day for Victoria. Oh, fuck, it fucking wasn't. He has done nothing to, to say to Victoria. You know, he's saying, we've got to reopen. We've got to reopen. We've got to re... Here's an idea, Andrews. Give us something to smile about, you arrogant prick. Now, journos won't ask him anything. And he's banned some journalists from his news conferences. <laughs> right? He had to because they were asking him questions he didn't want to answer. Sort of like, you know, loosely Trump banning some of the American networks because he didn't like the questions. Well, Andrews is doing that here in Victoria. But, I mean, he doesn't smile. 
he treats us like shit. He, he demands us. He dictates to us. Then Matthew Guy comes along, starts producing a positive attitude for Victoria. Andrews does a 180 degree flip. <coughs> now, we've got a state election next year here in Victoria. And Andrews is hoping, and this, this, this is how it works. Andrews is hoping we will forget the last two years in this state. We'll forget it. I won't. A frickin' approval rating in the high 50s. How can people think he's done a good job? Look at the look at the longest look at the Guinness World Record of the longest lockdown. He doesn't care. He has not once defended Victoria in national cabinet. Sutton's not defended Victoria in HPPC from what we know. He doesn't defend us against interstate attacks. You know, Mark McGann goes after Victoria just as hard as he goes after New South Wales. Now New South Wales defends themselves. Our Premier doesn't. Mainly because Mark McGowan's on the same side of the ALP as Andrews is. It's just insane. The CFMEU is a militant union. Now, they're going to take Andrews to the cleaner over this. Okay? But you see, Andrews is reacting to public sentiment now. Rather than his union mates, you've got to, he's from the ACTU, most of Labor is. Now, the construction business is shut down for a fortnight, but I think it'll be quicker than that. In fact, I can guarantee you it will be. I just find it inane. We suffer... You've got Ma Pa small businesses that are crushed. Hospitality is ripped to shreds. Tourism is shot, right? Nothing in the roadmap about getting that going again. And without public confidence, you don't have tourism. So here's an idea for your Burnett and Doherty Institute. How about you release a plan to help the public rebuild their lives? Because all you're showing is the virus point of view. You've given nothing about bringing Victorians and putting a smile back on their face. Because I can tell you now, I don't know any Victorian who currently is happy. Unless you're a supporter of Daniel Andrews, in which case you're smiling from ear to ear because you think he's done the world's best job. I'll tell you who has done the world's best job. No one. No politician in the world has done done the best job all right regardless of where you live in the world but this report that I read in the in one of the US media and I don't know maybe my US viewers can attest to this but the cases of agoraphobia in the US so it might even be in New York where people are just shit scared to leave their homes that's what's going to happen here in Victoria. Because we know in this state, one case. Now, Andrew says they can handle this once the vast majority of us have all got 5G ability. Right? He'll still lock us down. What he won't do is the minute he calls the next election, he won't lock us down. But I can tell you, parts of Victoria are going to boo him out of the state. Do you know, there are parts of Victoria that after the 2019-2020 bushfire is still not rebuilt yet, which means tourists can't get there, which means they're going to have a shit of a Christmas. Oh, I can't help that. We'll just have to figure that out at a later date. I'll throw money at a problem. That'll fix it. Just throw money at a problem. Listen, throwing money at a problem doesn't fix it. You know, kids are out of school. Right, Sutton finally admitted only a, a week or two ago that we have a massive mental health problem in this state. We have a shadow pandemic. Andrews doesn't recognise it. The state's chief psychiatrist had to convince the government of the problem before the government would do anything. But it's not just kids that have got issues. Aged care residents. 
they're being forgotten about by family members because family are like, well, I can't go see them, so it doesn't matter. There's no plan for that either. Because Andrews has said to the aged care sector, well, you just, you, if you don't want to let people in, don't let people in. He's done the same with the hospitals. If you don't want to let people in, don't let them in. You, fuck. That, what, that, that's supposed to make people feel better. Andrews Sutton, the deputy director or the deputy secretary of the bloody health department here in Victoria, they got no idea the socio damage that's being done. The funny thing is, they all need small business. They're not going to have it if this keeps going. And anyone who thinks, any Victorian who is adamant this state will just snap back to a happy state, fuck, you're more delusional than me. Because I can tell you now, no one I know is smiling. Most people I know are devastated. Another five weeks of lockdown. No defending from Daniel Andrew. He doesn't defend anything. He publicly says nothing. You'd think he'd come out and say, look, I'm sorry this has occurred. I'm sorry we've got the world record. I'm going to do everything we can. He's just going to expect the public to forget. I can tell you where I live, they won't forget. You know, they won't forget. How can someone who keeps a state locked down for this long have over 60% approval rating? Kids out of school. Parents, are, and, and this shadow pandemic, they, they've only just admitted now, and then I'll oh, just throw money at an issue, or that'll fix it, we'll just throw money. Hundreds of millions of dollars at the problem. Do you know what would fix the problem? I can tell you what will fix the problem. Remove the restrictions. And give the fucking public something to smile about. Don't just assume that removing the restrictions is going to put a smile on the public's face. Give them something. Prove to them that you're not going to lock us up again. Prove to them that it's now you can go and see people. Prove to them. Because if you're not going to prove it, and you're just going to work on the assumption, well, once we get to 80% and the restrictions come off, Victorians will be smiling. You're fucking kidding yourself, Andrews. If you think that's going to make people smile, you've got another thing coming. Hospos shot. Regional tourism stuffed. If you think people are just going to be like, right, the restrictions are off, let's move. No, they're not. There's going to be a lot of angst. There's going to be a lot of people shitting themselves about going anywhere. And the divide between regional Victoria and metropolitan Melbourne is only going to get bigger. Because I can guarantee you, and I know this for a couple of areas of Victoria, regardless of your vaccination status, if you're from Melbourne, you will not be served in regional Victoria, regardless. Because no one in regional Victoria trusts Melbourne at the moment. Even though they want people from Melbourne, no one trusts them because they know that Melbourne's riddled. And now regional Victoria is just as riddled because of these fucking construction workers not doing the right thing. So, you know, it's just... Can I make a suggestion? If you are a Victorian, don't come home. Just stay where you are. You're going to have more freedoms wherever you are in the world... And if you are overseas and want to come back to Victoria, I'd just stay overseas. Forget coming home. You're going to be better off in the you, you know if you're if you're in the US, I'd stay there. I wouldn't come home, not to Victoria. If, if you're interstate, don't come home because you're going to be slammed into a lockdown and not going anywhere at least until the end of November. Here's another thing, right? My Vic viewers. Now, my interstate viewers, this won't concern you, neither will my international, my Vic viewers. Have any of you noticed that, you know, he always talks about the state-run hubs? He seems to neglect the numbers going through the chemist and the GPs. Only ever says, oh, look at the state-run hubs, look at the state-run hubs. I've had my 5G injection. 
from my GP because I didn't want to give Andrews the glory of putting me down as a state statistic. He never talks about that. It's all, oh, look at the state run hubs. Look at the state run hubs. Andrews, listen here, dictator. How about you be open and honest and give the full numbers, including what goes through the uh, the uh, GP network and goes through the chemist? Instead of just saying, you know, 45,000 done through state-run hubs. How about you add up on your dailies and tell the public exactly how many are being done, including the chemist and the GP? Because it's no wonder Victorians think we're going nowhere when you're only talking about the state-run hubs. <coughs> Now, I've got no time, you know. I've now been, you know, I was talking to a mate of mine last night saying, even when the restrictions come off, the other half will be busting their balls to get out and go places. I'm going to be sitting here going, you sure we should be going there? You know, and this is the thing. All my close friends, personal friends are in Melbourne. I'm not sure I should be going up there anytime soon. And they probably won't be wanting to leave Melbourne because the minute there's a case in an LGA, Andrews will just shut it down. The other thing is, that bloody curfew will not be lifted before Christmas. Because right now we've got school holidays, we've got the AFL Grand Final coming up. We're all Most of the state's now in lockdown, okay? I guarantee you the curfew will stay on. He's lying through his teeth because at the moment he knows... He's got control. The problem he's going to have is even if we meet the targets we're supposed to meet, the Melbourne, the city of Melbourne, the CBD is disastrous. Richmond is shot. South Yarra is stuffed. There's no recovery plan. You know, he's, he's going to leave it up to the mayor of, the, mayor of Melbourne. Now, for my US viewers, um, We, our mayors are different to your city mayors, all right? I don't want you getting confused, all right? But effectively, the mayor of Melbourne, right, Sally Cap, the government's going to leave it up to her to convince the public to come into Melbourne. That's what happened last time. The government said, removes the restrictions and walks away. Now, Daniel Andrews doesn't listen to people, all right? He's got more advisors around him than Morrison's got around him. And most of them are not really... Well, there's a, some Muslims, there's some Jewish, there's some others. Now, here's the deal. Andrews really doesn't want to let the public go. He's got total control. And as for Brett Sutton, okay... He doesn't instill confidence into the public either. He is a sour prick. And I can tell you what, once if we get to these goals that they've set, Sutton is still going to be looking at the bad side of this. He can't be positive. Andrews can't be positive. Molino can't. None of them can show any positivity. Right? Sutton's a sour prick. I can tell you now, judging by the way this has been going, we meet these targets and the restrictions are removed. Sutton is still going to be looking at the dark side of it and telling the public, oh, no, 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 you can't do this, can't do this, can't do this, can't do this. No, 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 you'll get crook, you'll get crook. The other thing is, neither Brett Sutton, Daniel Andrews, Martin Foley will admit that even when you're vaccinated, you still get it. All the vaccination does is stop you going to hospital. You still get crook. It's like the flu. You can still get the flu when you're vaccinated. I got it. You know, you still get it. The only difference is the vaccine stops you going to hospital. Yet, get this. Out of all the cases we've got in hospital, the vast majority are unvaxxed. 2% are fully vaxxed. So it shows you that even if you are fully vaxxed, you can still end up in hospital. What they're after is herd immunity. That might work. But neither Andrew Sutton or Foley will tell. They'll just say, get the vaccine. It protects you and your family and stops you going to hospital. What they don't say is, you still bloody get it. All it does is stop you going to hospital. No, they won't say that. You still get it. It just stops you getting it badly. And the other thing is, 
It might reduce transmission, but you can be asymptomatic and still pass it on. So the fact is, is that it's clear. I mean, the CDC says and the NIH in the US say, it. the um, NHS in the UK has said the same thing. All it does is reduce the the possibility of you going to the hospital real crook, but you still get it. So the vaccine doesn't work. Well, no, that's not true. It does work, but it just all it, it doesn't wipe it out. It simply prevents or lowers your risk of going to hospital. And as for us walking around like fucking Chinese people with bloody masks on, God, WA's not, Queensland's not, Territory's not, South Australia, I, don't, I think it's just optional. New South Wales isn't. I can tell you what, I'm sick of breathing in my own air. Anyway, there we are. Bit of a rant for a Tuesday. I just think it's insane. You know, it's bullshit. But this is what happens when you live in a left-wing socialist state. I doubt Daniel Andrews or Brett Sutton, when these restrictions come off, are going to have anything positive to say. Andrews doesn't say anything positive, and Sutton always looks at the bad side, and Martin Foley. Now, my Vic viewers, we know Foley, but bloody hell, for my international viewers and in the state, this is how Martin Foley, the health minister here in Victoria, talks like. Currently, we have 5,481 cases. We did 42,500 tests and only 38,700 vaccines. It's manoral tone. Boring. You know, and then you've got Andrews who's like, you will do this and I demand you. And then you've got Brett Sutton who's just, the, you know, the chief of darkness, basically. He can't smile about anything, that prick. He might be the chief health officer, but I can tell you what, when the restrictions come, it's like last time. Towards the end of last year, when he, when the restrictions came off, he's like, well, yeah, I mean, the restrictions are off, but let's face it, it's still very dangerous. Sutton, here's a good idea. If we get through this, for once in your fucking life, smile and be happy and give the public confidence. I mean, we look at these politicians and health experts and it's no wonder we're not happy. All they talk about is dark and dark and bad and bad. That doesn't do depression very good. That only pushes it further if you don't realise that. Good God. Anyway, there we are. Sitting on the fence round for a Tuesday. I'll catch you around the channel. I'll catch you around my main channel tomorrow.